Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First topic we'll be going over is Julio Rodriguez and analyzing his underwhelming season for the Seattle Mariners. After that, we'll be going into some Mets pitching news, Tim Anderson being DFA'd by the Miami Marlins, and the Futures Games roster for both the American League and the National League. Now, before we do all that, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers to ensure that your question does get read right in the air. Please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show for today. All right. So as I talked about, our first segment is going to be about Julio Rodriguez and analyzing the season. So let's get into it. Now, Julio Rodriguez bursted onto the scene a few years ago with being one of the top prospects in baseball. I mean, I remember how hyped up this guy was, and it was really for a good reason. He was very hyped up coming out of, um, you know, being an international signee from the Mariners. Um, was that way since they signed him. Bursted, uh, you know, just bursted his way all through the minor leagues. Hit great, was doing fantastic, and really became someone that Mariners fans looked towards as a potential face of the franchise, a future of the franchise for a Mariners franchise and team that really didn't really have an identity, hadn't really had a true superstar since Ken Griffey Jr. left and Joe Suzuki left. So when Julio Rodriguez did end up coming up back in 2022, he was fantastic. I mean, uh, he had played 130. He played in 132 games. His his WAR ended up being 5.7. And he was just a fantastic, fantastic player. Was everything that the Mariners wanted out of him. Looked like the next future superstar of the MLB, and rightly so. I mean, again, he was doing just absolutely fantastic and incredible. And the Mariners rewarded him for it. They gave out one of the most unique contracts in baseball in probably sports history, giving giving him a huge 15-year contract with multiple different options and different kinds of things and incentives. But really what it all meant was, Julio Rodriguez got a huge contract that would make him a Seattle Mariner for a long, long time. And that's exactly what he wanted, and that's exactly what the team wanted. So coming up to the major leagues, he looked like a future superstar, and that's it's continued to be the case. He had a really good season last year, but this year it's been a different story. I mean, you look at his stats currently, he has his, eight, his weighted runs created plus at an 84. This was really rough. His OPS is at 625, which is also very, very rough. I mean, you look at some other stats as well. His K percentage is up after that. Again, his OPS is really, really rough. His ISO is not even at .100, which is awful. So, right now, the Mariners are doing great themselves. I mean, they're ahead in the AO, they're ahead in the AOS, but at the same time, Julio Rodriguez isn't the reason for it. He's their best player by far, I'd say, especially their best position player. But really, he has not been the reason why they have done so well. And there's been a lot of struggles going around with him. And a lot of Mariners fans, I can tell, are getting frustrated. I see a lot of time on social media that they really have no answer at this point for Julio and why he is doing so poorly. So I did want to talk here today about why I think he is doing so poorly. And also, if it if it um, if it's unluckiness, if it genuinely is just him regressing, if there's something else to it, and just talk about Julio in general. So, yeah, I think the first thing we have to look at again is his stats. I mean, again, 84 rated runs created plus, his OPS at 625, which is really really rough. And I think with that OPS, his weighted runs created plus probably wouldn't have been much higher, and probably would have been in the 70s or 60s in the end of the season. So, still 84 at this point is really horrible. You look at his contract. You know, he has 12 years, $209 million left on it. So if I'm, a, if I'm a Mariners fan or a Mariners front office person, am I worried? Yeah. I mean, at this point, you look at how huge that contract is, and you look at how many years are left, you look at how he's performing, it's definitely something you want to get figured out uh, sooner rather than later. And also, this Mariners team trying to win. It will be different if he was having a rough season and the Mariners were rebuilding and retooling. No, this Mariners team is trying to win. And having your star player perform this underwhelmingly is really rough. They are still playing well, but again, imagine how much better this team would play if Julio is playing up to his standards. So I think the first thing we have to ask is, again, what is behind these struggles? And I think there are a few things. Now, I think when you look at his stats pretty clearly, you can see that it's not he's, it's not like he's getting just insanely unlucky. And this will all end. I mean, you look, first of all, at his Babbitt, which really isn't doing that bad. His batting average on balls in play. It's basically the same as last year. Last year was 330. This year it's 326, which is a perfectly average Babbitt, especially for a guy like Rodriguez, who is fast and young, so he can beat out those infield ground balls, those th- those balls that you know are on the ground or something like that. So it's not exactly like he's getting uh, that. Un- it's not exactly like he's getting unlucky. It's the same as last year when he did very well. You also look at his um, other hitting stats. His 
mean, um, it's really, again, no, there's nothing that really stands out as significantly like, wow, he is really, really getting unlucky. I mean, his, uh, his barrel percentage is down from last year, so that's showing something else there. His hard hit percentage is down 5% from last year, which is significant. You look also at his um, Woba and X Woba. It's not a huge differential. Woba is 280. His expected Woba is 330. So it's not a huge differential, but it is something. But still, I'm not saying that's the, that's the big reason why he is underperforming. But overall, I think one thing we have to look at is pitchers and pitch selection and Julio's now been in the major leagues for three years been a star in those three years finished high in MVP voting last year and I think pitchers are finally realizing what to do and how to pitch them you look at baseball savant for example for for Julio Rodriguez stats you can very much see that pitchers are pitching them very different and one of the things is fastballs Julio crushes fastballs I mean you look at his stats all throughout his career he throughout the minor leagues as well he hits the fastball well and pitchers now know okay we're not going to throw him fastballs. And I think that's a big reason why he is performing as he is. They're throwing him a lot of off-speed pitches, a lot of stuff that moves more than a fastball. And when Julio isn't getting the fastball, he's a significantly different hitter than when he is. So that is something that Julio is going to have to adjust to and is going to have to do better. At. Now, he's always going to be a better fastball hitter than an off-speed pitcher. That's obvious. But you have to be able to at least hit make it competitive at bat when someone throws you off speed to be able to not have the pitcher make it so easy. I mean, right now, if I'm a pitcher, I'm not throwing Julio any fastballs whatsoever. Even if I'm a fastball pitcher, even if I'm a rolled as Chapman, I'm not throwing him fastballs, okay? I'm throwing as much off speed as I can, and I'm not going away from it because he hasn't shown he can hit it. No matter what kind of pitch you are, he's just not shown he can hit it. So that is a problem, I'd say. I mean, this is a guy who you have as the face of your franchise. is getting paid a significant amount of money for a long time. And again, it's not like the manners were are a big market team. It's not like they can just throw money around like whenever they want. It's not like to the Mets, the Yankees, the Dodgers, someone like that. They only give out these contracts maybe once every 10 years, if I'm being generous. So having your star player have these have these issues in, in year three is something that I think needs to be talked about. So that's really one thing I think Julio has to work on. Now, I'm not saying that it's a, that's the entire problem. There are probably a lot of other things as well. I'm sure um, you know, mentally there's something going on because when you're a star player like Julio, you probably beat yourself up once you're not hitting as well and you probably get low on confidence. So I really think Julio just needs a hot streak. I think he needs one to two weeks where he's just crushing the baseball to get his confidence back because you watch the bats right now. He's, he's definitely not the same person. He's Obviously, he still is an intimidating person face at, um, at the plate. But he's just not the same Julio that we saw throughout the minor leagues, that we saw as a top prospect, that we saw throughout his first two years in the big leagues. So I think if I'm a Mariners fan and I'm Julio, I really need him to just be confident again, be himself, and hit the off-speed pitches. Just hit the off-speed pitches, man. I mean, it's easy for me to say because I talk about baseball. I don't play baseball. But still, that's really what I think the big problem is here. I think he just has to start hitting those off-speed pitches, has to be able to adjust to pitchers because it's not the minor leagues anymore. This is the big leagues. You're playing in a significant division as well playing teams, playing the defending world champion Rangers, playing the Astros, playing with these, all the other great AL teams as well. So he needs to be able to adjust to big league pitchers and adjust to these kind of things. So I think that is really what has to work with Julio right now. And look, the, should the Mariners be worried long term? Yes and no. No, because I, I think this will eventually be solved by Julio. The Mariners have a great organization as well. I'm sure they'll figure. I'm sure they'll help the problem out as well. We have all the we have all the tools in the world nowadays for baseball to be able to help hitters like this. But at the same time, having a guy like this on such a huge contract where there really is no out for the next 10 to 11, 12 years, having these problems in year three in a significant time in your franchise is a problem that I think is going to worry you. I just don't know how long-term because I still believe in Julio. I still believe in his talent. I still believe in how good he is. So I don't really think there's anything um, to, like long, long-term, like two, three years from now that you should be worried about. This year, maybe, but I still trust in Julio. I still trust in his talent. I trust in the Mariners organization to be able to fix him, quote-unquote. He's not broken, but he d does need some fine-tooling, I'd say. Now, the Mariners, this Mariners team is still fantastic. I mean, right now, you are looking. You look at them um, in the AO West. You look at where they are currently. I mean, they are ahead of the Astros. They have really been in a stronghold for, the, for this for around a month now. They are currently uh, three games ahead of the Astros. But at the same time, the Astros are doing much better as of recently. Really started off the season rough, but are doing a lot, a lot better. 
and you need Julito to step it up because if you lose the grip on the AOS, which is very, which could definitely happen, it people are going to look to your star player as to why he's not performing. So, um, you know, Mariners still still a great team. Imagine how great they'll be when Julio gets back to his form. I mean, pretty scary, I'd say, with that pitching as well. So. Um, they also have the possibility to add a big bat at the deadline, which I've talked about before. I love their farm system. I think if any team is going to add a big bat, it is probably going to be them. So, yeah, uh, definitely a lot to like so with this Mariners team. Again, imagine how good they'll be when Julio does start performing again. So, yeah, I did want to come in here, talk about Julio Rodriguez and his struggles with the Seattle Mariners and just what's going on there. And, uh, yeah, just give him my thoughts on it and what I think uh, he, can, he can use to improve. So, yeah, that is our first segment here, talking about Julio Rodriguez and his struggles with the Seattle Mariners. We'll be going into our second segment here, which is going to be talking about the Mets and some recent pitching news with them. Uh, they did have they did have uh, some news about three of their pitchers talking about them. You can see them flash on the screen over there. So, yeah, we talk about that, and we'll see you after the break. So, thanks, and bye. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. 